Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It is a familiar verse to you know, many of us. And I'm sure you've heard many great preachings through these verses. But as preaching goes, you and I need to be reminded over and over. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and it is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Brother Matthew, can you please pray for the message? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for another day of life to bring honor and glory to your name, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, and we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you for the brethren, Lord God, because we can rely on each and every one of these members here, Lord. And I pray that you continue to heal our church, Lord, and protect our church from the devil's attacks, Lord Amen. God. We pray that you bless the service and you bless the fellowship afterwards, Lord. We pray that the pastor may be filled with the Holy Spirit, yes. Lord Jesus, Sorry. and that we be filled with the Holy Spirit also, so that we would allow thy word to be a lamp unto our feet and a lamp unto our path, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The title of the message is Keep Your Eyes on Jesus. Keep Your Eyes on Jesus. The hardest job as a Christian. And the hardest job as a Christian, whoever you are, especially if you are saved and if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, is keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ at all times. I mean, if you look at your life, that will be the hardest thing to do. There are too many things going on in, around your lives, right? You have your life to take care of. You have your family's life. You have your work. You have friends, acquaintance. I mean, you have everything that's going on. And with all those things happening, what happens is that you start losing vision of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about seeing Jesus in your dreams, okay? So that's not, you know, biblical. And especially after the Bible was finished, you know, it's not something you want to look after, right? You know, when we talk about keep your eyes on Jesus, we're not looking at a, you know, statue. We're not looking at, you know, poster, painting, right? You know, we, that's not the Jesus you're trying to look at. You're looking at Jesus who saved you from hell. You're looking at Jesus, someone that you can't see. So that's the hardest thing to do. As human beings, it's easier and easier to believe something that you can see, right? It's harder and harder to believe something that you cannot see. That's why they say, you know, seeing once is better than hearing it a thousand times. Right? You know, if I hear description of this person, that person, I mean, I'll have my, you know, imagination going. I'll be drying in my head. However, if I see that person once, you know, it takes care of every question. However, faith, what is faith then? Right? Let's go to the book of Hebrews, right in the same, same book. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And if you want to know the definition of faith, here it is. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is believing in something that you can't see. Simple as that, right? I mean, have you seen Jesus Christ? I mean, glad no one raised your hand, right? You know, you and I haven't seen Jesus Christ. That's why it has become the hardest thing as a Christian, to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Hardest thing is not giving or praying or going to church or singing. Hardest thing is keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. Same book, you know, let's go to chapter 11, verse 27. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 27, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. 
Someone that you can't see, but you have faith in him and faith on him. We put our trust in Jesus Christ and on Jesus Christ. Why? Because he saves us from hell. Amen. Then if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it should not stop right there. Right? Your faith should not stop when you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It needs to go through. Let's look at verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It starts with Jesus Christ and it ends with Jesus Christ. One day you'll see Jesus Christ. Then your faith is complete. Yes. And until that day, your faith needs to continue. You know, we have a favorite hymn, right? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And I'll read you a verse, right? O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. Maybe some Christians are going through that stage right now. Maybe you're going through that stage. Right? You're weary and you're troubled, right? And you see no light in the tunnel, right? It's all dark, right? But, but the hymn says, there's life for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Think about it. You know, wherever state you are as a Christian, you, know, you, you could be going through the best of times, you could be going through the worst of times, and you could be going through the up and down times. But through it all, you have to turn your eyes upon Jesus. You gotta keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? When you look at Jesus Christ, there's light, there's hope, and there's that sense of assurance. Why do you think people lose assurance of salvation? Why do you think so many Christians don't have eternal security? I mean, they, they know they accepted Christ as their savior. However, since they're not looking unto Jesus Christ, because they're not keeping their eyes on Jesus Christ, what happens is that they start questioning, right? And am I really saved? Where am I going after I die? And the reason is because you're not keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not going anywhere, right? He's where he's at. It's you and I who wander away. You know, if our eyes lose focus at a certain person, what happens? It becomes blurry, right? I mean, is Jesus Christ blurry in your life right now? Or is he even there, right? For some people, you know, they have completely turned themselves away from looking unto Jesus Christ. That's where backslidden Christians come in. And that's why you have to admit that it's a hard thing to do, keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ at all times, right? But considering these things, but you could know for sure this one thing, if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is yours to whom to look. Amen. It's yours to whom to look. That's Jesus Christ, right? What does that even mean? When you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he becomes yours and you become his. Amen. I mean, that's a, that's a great assurance when you think about it. You know, he's mine. You know, we have hymns, right? He is mine. And you are his as well. You're bought with a price. His precious blood washed away all your sins. Amen. That's why it is perfectly prof proper for you and I to look at him at all times. You know, we should be keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ at all times. If you were to have Jesus Christ in your vision all times, you keep your eyes on him at all times, do you think you will do certain things that you've done in the past? Do you think you will think certain things that you're thinking right now? Because the devil's going to attack you at all times, especially if you're saved, you know, you're born again Christian, believing in the right word of God, KGV 1611, you're in a local church, you really want to serve the Lord, you haven't left your first love, Jesus Christ, and that you still want to, you know, have that zeal for the lost souls out there, and you want to be that good testimony that do not burn out, and be the light to the lost soul out there, you know, devil's going to do his best. Right. And devil's going to make sure that 
You can't concentrate. You can't keep your eyes on him. When do people get in trouble, especially you know, if you're having conversation with someone? When they don't listen to you. When they don't listen to you fully. When they don't even look at you. I mean, don't you get offended when you're talking to someone? And I mean, you're, you're having serious talk. You're looking at him. I, you're trying to look at the person eye to eye, right? But they turn around. And a lot of times this happens, right, at home with the husbands, right? You know, wives, children. And your loved ones are trying to talk to you. And then you're turning around. Oh, yeah, yes, I got it, honey, right? And then, you know, your wife or husband asks you, well, what did I just tell you, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, you, you told me this and that, right? And you, you vaguely remember. However, you don't remember the whole thing. And what do you know? You know, maybe you were supposed to take the trash out. You're supposed to maybe clean things up. You're supposed to go to the shop, buy stuff, or do whatever you were supposed to do, and you forget. And your spouse have every right to get mad at you. Because first time when you had that conversation, you did not have your eyes on your spouse. You're just, you know, half-heartedly, you know, just listening to it, and you just let it go. You come in this year and let it go the other year, vice versa. Then what happens? You make mistakes, and you're going to, you're not going to have a proper view of things to do. That's why as a Christian, when, when you wake up first thing in the morning, and you don't keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, your day is going to be messed up. doesn't matter. I mean, how good of a day you had day before. Like, for example, today, you're at church, you're with loving brethren, you're listening to good word of God, and you're going to study the word of God. You have, you know, you have lunch, you know, have good fellowship. You know, maybe some of you get assurance of salvation, right? If not, you get saved. You know, it's a great day. But tomorrow comes around, you're like, oh, man, it's not as good as yesterday, right? You see that void. You have that void, even as a Christian. Why? Because you're not keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. Simple as that. You start the day with the Lord Jesus Christ, you keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, then it's going to go better. Do you know why many Christians do not have a satisfied Christian life? You're always struggling. You're never fully happy. There's not joy in your life. Even though you have this joy of salvation, because one thing for sure is that if you trust the Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to worry about burning in hell once and for all. So we have that assurance. We have that joy. But as a Christian, walking your Christian life, you just don't have that joy. It's like it's a mundane, you know, it becomes very indifferent, don't care type of Christian life. You know, you don't have that fire. You don't have that zeal. You know, that first love seems such a far away concept, right? And looking at the Bible isn't the same. If, if you even look at it, like you, don't, you don't really pray like you used to. Why? Because you're not keeping your eye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're keeping your eye on everything else. I mean, seriously, you know, like you keep your eyes on your finances, you keep your eyes on the job, you keep your eyes on the kids, you keep your eyes on your husband, wife, you know, your parents or whatnot. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but that can't be your priority. Your priority should always be, number one, keeping your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't be looking at Mary. You can't be looking at Pope, Muhammad, Buddha, you know, Zen, everybody out there. They are not going to give you that peace. They're not going to give you assurance. They're not even your savior. Right. They're not resurrected. You know, they're buried. That's why you need to look to Jesus Christ. Not your friend, not your priest, right? You know, you have a high priest. That's Lord Jesus Christ. Who paid for all your sins? That's Jesus Christ, right? Who died for you? Who shed his precious blood for you? That's Jesus Christ. When you trusted him, you enrolled in his army, and he's your master. Can you imagine? I mean, say, you know, you have a master, and you work for your master, and your life depends on the master's direction, literally. You know, A, B, C, D, all the way through the Z. You do as what the master tells you to do. That's what your life is all about. 
And if you do it accordingly, then you're happy. You're joyous. You get rewards. Everything. However, if you don't do it, you know, you don't do A, you don't do B, you do C, but you don't do D, E, F, and all rest of the things that you're supposed to do, you're going to live a miserable life. Why? Because inside you, you have him as your Lord and Savior. Yeah? You're still with the Holy Ghost. You're making that person sad. You're making that person terribly sad. When, you're, when you realize that you're living a life making a person miserable and sad, do you think you're happy? I mean, for the right reasons, right? right? If that person is miserable because you're living right, it's on them, right? You're living godly, you know, you're trying to live holy, you're trying to live according to the word of God, and say your loved ones, like your families, your friends, or coworkers, hate you for it, and their life is miserable for it, it's fine, right? You know, you, you, you live your life, Christian walk that way. However, but if your loved ones and people around you are influenced in the wrong way because of you, then you have a serious problem. You have a sin problem, right? You're only looking at yourself. What, what is the message about? Keep your eyes on Jesus, but you're not. You're keeping your eyes on yourself. Literally, the best person, most lovable person, most adorable person in your life is what you see, who you see in the mirror. And that's why you get into trouble. That's why your life your Christian walk, it's not that satisfying. Right? When you do think about it, Lord gives and takes us away as he pleases. Right? If you keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, right? whether you're healthy, unhealthy, right? whatever problems that you're going through, you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. And you're going to have that assurance and joy. Why? Because your eyes kept on the Lord Jesus Christ, who's going to take care of you no matter what. I mean, Romans 8.28 says what? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they called according to his purpose. So whatever happens, whatever life throws at you, right? Whatever devil throws at you, whatever flesh throws at you, whatever the world throws at you, you're okay. You're fine. Because Romans 8.28 says all things work together for good. Right? You know, maybe I was a millionaire yesterday, but I'm a poor beggar today. It's fine. Why? Because that's what Lord wants it to happen, then I'm fine with that. Right? If I had the job yesterday, but for whatever reason I don't have the job today, you know, Lord's going to take care of me. Because He said He's going to take care of you in the Word of God. Then, why do you worry? Why are you discouraged? Why are you having such a miserable Christian life? Why are you such a bad influence to your family and friends and people around you? Why? Because the answer is, you're not keeping your eye on Jesus Christ at all times. You know, it's not something that you do like just once per day. It's got to be you know, part of your life. It's someone that you look, keep your eyes on. You know, that's the Bible. It's a continuous, right? Looking unto Jesus. It doesn't say you looked at Jesus, right? You will look at, I mean, in the future tense. No, it's present tense. Presently then, the question is, are you looking at Jesus Christ? You know, are you keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ? I mean, he's coming back. Amen. You and I know that. He's coming back. And he promised he'll come back. Yes. And don't you think the Lord's going to keep his promise? He is then why aren't you looking for him, right? Uh, say if you have a loved one, whether it's your husband, wife, whether it's your children, grandparents, you know, you have a loved one, and they say, you know what, I'm going to go away to a far country, but I'll be back around this time, right, when these things do happen, right? And according to the word of God, you know, we're in the end times. Many of the things are happening. 
And if you are that mother, if you are that father, if you are the son and daughter and brother and sister, don't you think you'll be out every day in the front door looking for that person, looking for your loved ones, right? I mean, you're going to do your best, and you'll never forget, right? Because they're always on your mind, you know? They're like, you're seeing them, you know, even in your dreams because it's, your head is so full of that person. But when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ, who, you know, died on the cross for you, I mean, do you really look at him, right? What happened to the Israelites, you know, back in the Exodus, right? They committed sin and people are dying, right? They're getting bitten by, you know, fiery serpent, you know. What did they have to do? They just had to look at brazen serpent on the pole. That's all they had to do. They just had to look up, and they were fine, right? When you're going through all your troubles right now, I mean, what do you do? Do you look up, right? And, you know, back in the day, you know, this person was having a hard time, and he, you know, he was a big boss of a company, Christian. And then one of his you know, subordinates, direct report, was talking to him. Man, boss, why are you so down today? And why are you so down? You know, you know, financially, you know, we're not doing good. Company stock is going down. You know, we have a turmoil inside the company. You know, we have this, all these issues going on. Because, you know what? You know, you and I both know that we're believers, right? Did you try to look up? Right? It hit him, right? He was just looking at everything underneath, right? He was looking down. He was looking sideways. He was looking, you know, front and back. But he never looked up. When he looked up and he realized, you know, what kind of mess he was in. You know, this is a, you know, it's this written by Lita Voigt, and it's called Das Faith. It says, looking away from my sin and my shame, looking away from my sorrow and pain, looking to Jesus, the lamb that was slain, Das Faith. Looking away from my knowledge and pride, looking to Jesus, my shepherd and guide, looking to Jesus and him crucified, that's faith. Looking away from my gain or my loss, looking away from the world and its dross, looking to Jesus on Calvary's cross, that's faith. Looking away from my faith or its lack, looking to Jesus whose word is not slack, looking to Jesus and turning not back, that's faith. Once you look down to Jesus Christ, you can't turn back, right? But as too many of you guys, as Christians, have turned back. You and I have never seen Jesus Christ, but you know he's there, right? Amen. Your faith, right? Yeah. Because the word of God is perfect. We have a proof. And there's a saying, and Dr. Ruckman, you know, used this illustration many, many times, right? If you put your hand out and someone gives you an apple, you know that person exists, right? Yeah. right? I mean, right? like in this room, in a dark room, and then you put your hand out, and there's an apple. Someone puts it there, right? There's orange, right? There's grapes. Then you know someone's out there, right? And when you pray, your prayers are answered, right? In your life, there are no coincidences. And there's Jesus Christ. That's why you have to look at Jesus Christ according to what the Bible says. Don't look at him how Hollywood treats him, right? Don't look at him how, you know, all this modern religions looks at him, right? Don't look at him like Jesus Christ superstar, right? That baloney show. You have to look at him as the one, the Savior who died for your sins, who's inside of you as your Lord and Savior, and who's coming back. Then your perspective will change. In order for you to look at Jesus Christ, then there are certain things that you cannot look at. And number one thing is that you can't look at yourself, as I mentioned. Don't look to yourself to try to increase your faith. What do you think is going to happen if you look at yourself to try to increase your faith? It's going to become worse and worse. You and I are deprived human beings. I mean, let's get that out of the way. We're just a sinner saved by grace. If I leave you alone, if I let myself live alone, 
and do whatever we want to do, it's going to be a mess, right? A lot of polluted sin will just come out of your mouth. Your eyes will be looking at a lot of wicked things. You know, your mind will be wondering to do wicked things. That's why don't look at yourself. You know? I mean, people might not want to hear it, but what you see on the mirror will destroy you if you follow that person. I mean, as a Christian, you just know, right? Your flesh is no good. I mean, what's going to come out of your flesh? Only the lustful things. That's why stop looking at yourself. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. And secondly, you can't look at others either. You know, don't look at others. Right? Some others are okay, but many of the others that you see, what happens? Loved ones will betray you, right? I mean, how many times have you guys been burned by people that you trusted, people that you loved? I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, that's why I even tell people, you know, expect that person to betray you one day. Why? Because as a person, as a human being, if you're not close to Jesus Christ, if you don't have your eyes on Jesus Christ, what's going to happen? You're going to go back to your old ways, your old nature, and you're going to betray. I mean, betrayal is a very, very common human characteristic. Look at Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples. Three and a half years with the Lord, right? And he betrayed Jesus Christ. I mean, he, they were, you know, spending practically all the time together for those years. And he betrayed them. Common characteristic. If you look at others, if you look unto others instead of Jesus Christ, what's going to happen? You know, they'll betray you. You yourself will betray them as well. So don't think that, you know, man, I never betray anybody. You will. I mean, if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, you are going to be like Judas Iscariot. I could be like Jesus, Judas Iscariot. I could betray my loved ones. You could betray loved ones. And you have betrayed loved ones. We all did. Why? Because we did not keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. That's why, you know, you, you got to have a ton of vision when it comes to this faith in Jesus Christ. You could only look at Jesus Christ. Right? It's the hardest thing to do. In Christian walk. Because, you know, imagine there's someone honking at you all the time. There's someone yelling at you all the time, right? There's always light flashing, right? And when you're driving in that condition, probably you hate it. Probably you go crazy. However, those things will not matter when you are so 100% focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, all this chapping, right? All this flashing, and all these, you know, things of the world that's hitting right at you, you won't, you won't care. And then, so you're not looking at yourself, you shouldn't. You're not looking at the others. Then what's the, another person you shouldn't look at? You know, Satan. You shouldn't look at devil for help, right? And then you say, oh, man, that's a ridiculous saying, you know. I mean, how can a Christian look at, G I mean, the devil for help? Believe it or not, many Christians want to just give up their Christian life. That's why many Christians think about suicide. Right. Right? I mean, it's true. I mean, we've heard some testimonies from, you know, great brothers and sisters, you know, strong of faith, doing many mighty things for the Lord in the past. But they're thinking about suicide. They're looking not at the Lord Jesus Christ. They're looking for Satan for help. It's almost like a compromise, right? You know what, devil? I'm going to give up certain parts of my faith. So since you're the God of this world, you know, make this happen. I mean, if you are that person, man, you better get right with the Lord. You just don't know which direction you're going to fall into now, right? You're like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to go street preaching anymore, right? I'm not going to do visitation anymore, you know, 
Forget about, you know, going to church anymore. I'll just do online service. You know, my testimony, just burn it up. It'll be like, a, you know, that candlestick, you know, the, the church that left the first love, like Ephesus, right? And it will look indifferent to other people. People look at my testimony and they'll be like, oh, I don't care. You know, it doesn't affect me at all. So that's why, you know, devil, you know, just give me what I want. Give me a million bucks. Give me that girl. Give me that guy, right? You know, give me this house. You know, give me this possession, material things, right? I mean, do you actually think that's going to work out well? I mean, do you think for a second that, man, I've been deceived by the devil? All this time, I've been looking for some help, but I've been looking for help from the devil the whole time. Devil does not appreciate you. Right. When devil comes, when, when you're pleasing him, he's not, he doesn't care about you. He hates you. Right. He'll never be happy with you. Why? Because you are not going to spend eternity in hell. Eternal lake of fire. He is. He's like, okay, you're done with it. You know, next person. On to the next person. That's why it is very important that you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Because you don't know who you're seeking your help from. Because when you're so away from Lord Jesus Christ and your vision is blurry, right? And you're looking at everywhere for help. Uh, I could guarantee you don't mind getting help from the devil at that moment. Because you already gave up your testimony. You don't care. I mean, that is a sad state. But you don't have to stay at that state. That's why God has got many chances. You can get right with the Lord. Another thing, you can't look at your victories or defeats. You know, so many people dwell in the victories. And so many people dwell in the defeat. What does the Bible say? You know, it's a famous verse, right? Philippians 3, 13. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. If it's in the past, forget it. Forget about it. If it was something that you've done wrong, you know, just confess to the Lord, not to the priest, not to your mom, your dad, or, you know, your wife or husband, or, you know, or your friends where you feel like you feel better. No, go straight to the Lord. Just like John, first John 1, 9, you know, if we confess our sins faithful and just forgive us sins and, and to cleanse us from all righteousness, go to him, get your sins problems, you know, taken care of, right? And then start over. Too many Christians. I mean, I was there, right? You're just dwelling in your victories. Even though those victories were many, many years ago. Even though those victories are many, many months ago. Man, I led a soul to the Lord. I have such a love, right? Right, right now, you don't read your Bible. You don't pray. You, know, you, don't, you don't do anything. But you're just dwelling. Oh, man, that was so great, Lord. I'm so thankful that you used me. When the tense should be in the past tense, you used me, you know? Because you look, if you dwell in those you know, past victories, it's going to make you very proud. Right. Yeah. And there's, you can't find no humble being in your body, right? I mean, you just dwell in and then That's why a lot of, lot of people, a lot of proud people, especially Christians, you know, a lot of egomaniacs or egotistic people, they'll just talk about the past tense. Man, do you know how many people I led to the Lord 10 years ago? Do you know how many times I read the Bible two years ago? Right? Do you know how long I used to pray, right? I was on my knees for two hours, you know. And then if you, they were to ask you, what about right now? Three. Recently, how many people have you, you know, really witnessed? How long do you pray? I mean, do you even have a Bible study with your family and stuff? Let's not talk about the present. Let's talk about the past, <laughs> right? Because that's what I want to talk about. So you don't want to be that person dwelling in the past, right? Because you're just looking at the past victories. But in the opposite spectrum, you have what? Defeats. 
and people are just dwelling in defeats. And you're constantly discouraged in your Christian walk. I'm like, man, I lost to the devil. I lost to the flesh. I lost to the world. Man, this sin, man, I just can't, I just can't win it. I just can't defeat it. But I've committed this sin, you know, even before I got saved, and I've been saved for like 30 years, and I'm still committing it. And I'm just a, you know, pathetic loser, right? And then you keep on discouraged. Like, you don't really want to do anything for the Lord. And because of your sins, of course, you know, I mean, you reap what you sow, and you're like, man, life, my life is a mess. You know, I'm ruined, you know, relationship-wise. I'm ruined financially, right? I'm ruined, you know, mentally, physically, whatever you name it. And you're just constantly looking and only thinking about what happened in the past. What if I made the right decision two years ago? What if I made the right decision five years ago? What if I made the right decision 10 years ago? I mean, what's that going to do right now? I mean, can you travel back in time? Right. I mean, can you go back like two years ago and say, you know what? You know, I'm going to change what I did. Instead of choosing A, I'm going to choose B. All right? Can you do that? Obviously, no. You can't go back in time. You know? You can. You're stuck at the present. Then... Just like what the Bible says, forgetting those things which are behind. Forget about it. You know, forget it. If it's too hard for you to forget, ask the Lord to help you forget. Man. I mean, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen as me. Which means that the Lord can strength, give you strength to do it. Then, if there are past victories, there are past defeats, that's just stopping you from keeping your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, then forget it. It's like this, you know, just once and for all, just cut it off, you know. If it was, you know, 2000, it happened 2015, it's done. You know, I put, if it was your fault, just say, me, I put it under the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, I confess my sins, and it's all gone, forget it. You know, if devil tries to attack you, you know what, Bible says it's gone, it's gone. I got them right with the Lord. And if it, it has been the pride, you got to go to the Lord in prayer again too, right? Lord, you know, I'm sorry for being such an arrogant, you know. Sinner, full of pride, you know, just thinking about what happened in the past, you know, and then becoming, you know, egomaniac, egotistic. Just admit it. Be honest with the Lord. And get right and start over. If you dwell on your, in your past victories and defeats, you can never have your 100% focus. You can never be 100% towards Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you have to just hang on to that word. You know, Philippians 3, 13 and 14 is, you know, probably two of the best verses for Christians. Yeah? Because as a mistaken, prone sinners, just saved by grace like you and I, it's great that God has given us this way out, this opportunity, this chance. We could forget about it, and we could just, just reach forth unto those things which are before and then you could press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Man, don't you want that calling from the Lord? Yes. Man, don't you want to be that person, well done, thou good and faithful servant? You know, servant's not perfect. However, Lord wants a faithful servant. Yes. You and I could have up and down, but we still want to keep our eyes on the Lord, right? I mean, as you're running towards Him, sometimes you're going to fall. Sometimes you might not see the rocks or debris in front of you. So you're going to fall and stumble. But if you have your eyes on the Lord, you look up and you're going to keep on going and going and going. Amen. Man, you're going to ultimately you know, accomplish what the Lord wants you to accomplish and be a good, good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, there was a man named Adolf Tuppenheim in Texas. In 1906, he fired five hours a day. And every five seconds at two and a half inch blocks, he missed 15 out of 37,200 marks. And if you have ever shot a gun before, you know, and if you've ever seen Olympics shooting, as a human being, that's almost impossible. Man, think about it. So out of 37,200 times that you shot, you only missed 15 times. 
We, we shoot 10 times and we miss like five times. He had an eye on the target, right? Man, don't you wish that you and I could have that kind of, you know, eyes for the Lord, right? Where we would only miss maybe 15, not even 37,000, maybe 15 out of 100 times because we kept our eyes on the Lord, you know? I mean, don't you want to be that kind of marksman as a Christian? You don't want to be that backslidden Christian. You don't want to stay as a backslidden Christian. There's going to be defeats on the way. Unwise people will say, you can always win. You can always be a winner. No, that's not in life, right? That, that, that is, a, you know, stupid thing to tell your children. You're always going to be a winner. You're always going to be a winner. No. Let them go to high school, college, throughout their life. They're going to start understand. They're going to realize I'm not always a winner, right? They're in sports competition. You know, they lose, right? Education, or whatever it is. That's why they have to learn how to take the loss. If you want your children to learn how to take the loss, you have to learn how to take the loss as well. You, know, you can't be that soccer mom or you know, football dad out there, right? Son, you're a failure, right? You didn't get the touchdown. You, know, you didn't score the goal, right? I say you're always a winner. Right now, you're not a winner in my eyes, you know? So you contradicted yourself. But it's a reality. Then if you and I know that, you know, we're losers sometimes, right? Then you get right with the Lord. You're like, you know what? You know, I lose sometimes. Then you have to really get right with the Lord. And that's when you will realize people like Richard Warmbrand and Harlan Papa, right, who was in communist prison for more than 13 years. Think about it. Tortured every day, right? I mean... I've heard, I mean, I've read it. If this is the wall, if my hand is the wall, they're supposed to stand like this all day in a blank wall. I mean, you're standing like this all day. And they keep on torturing you. And they're telling you, hey, give up the names, right? Give up the Christians, right? But they, you know, endure for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think that was a defeat for them? I mean, don't you think for those 13, 14 years, just in that horrible environment in prison, and they're just being tortured and tortured and tortured, no end in sight, right? Imagine it's your first year in the prison, not knowing that it's going to go on for another 13 years. I mean, it would defeat a lot of people. But you know what? They both put those horrible times Behind them, they got out and they got in the ministry, helped persecuted Christians throughout the world. They were able to move on from their defeats and have some victories later on. So in your Christian world, you're going to have some victories and you're going to have some defeats. But you have to move on. You have to forget it. And how do you do that? By looking unto Jesus Christ at all times. You have to keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ no matter what. Then you're going to have a satisfying Christian life. Then you're going to be feeling like, man, my life is worth the living. Why? Because, you know, the good old hymn says, because he lives. And more than that, because, you know, I keep my eyes upon him. Don't you think that when I, I'll finish with this, you know, sometimes... I wish I could be like my little dog, you know? I have a little papillon. If he hears I'm coming, he's right there. Same spot, just waiting for me to open the door, you know? And he starts barking, and he starts running after me. He sees that I'm there, and he just goes back, you know? And sometimes he stays there because he wants some treats, right? But his eyes, I mean, the Full attention, you know, is to me, right? He's owner. I mean, don't you think that you and I should have, you know, like that kind of attention to our Lord and Savior? 
Don't you think that we should be you know, waiting for him? We should be keeping our eyes on for him, and we should be looking unto him. And when he gets treated, he's the happiest dog in the whole world, right? But when he sees me, he's the happiest dog in the whole world, right? But when you see Jesus Christ, are you the happiest person in the world? Let's pray. Dear Henry Father, too many times, you know, we go day by day without keeping our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. We get distracted, discouraged, defeated by too many things happening in the world. And sometimes we go to wrong places for help. And many times we look at the wrong things. Heavenly Father, help us to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to just look up, Lord. Solution's already there. You're always there, Lord. Help us to find that solution looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Lord God. If any one of us, you know, don't know yet where we're going after we die, Lord God, I pray that today will be the day of salvation. I and mean, we don't want anybody to take chance of burning an eternal lake of fire. I pray that those who are saved, who've been saved, Lord, pray that we'll really reflect on our life and re-examine and judge our life, whether we've been keeping our eyes on you, living life, looking unto you, Lord Jesus. Bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone.